Good evening. Welcome to the Scotch Plains Fanwood Board of Education Open Agenda Meeting. Today is May 10th, 2022. Mr. Jones, will you please call the roll? Yes. Ms. Bauer? Here. Ms. Boroff, Ms. Brody, Mrs. Mitchell? Here. Ms. Sirianni, Ms. Williams? Here. Ms. Winkler? Here. Mr. Murray, Dr. Kolakowski? Here. Quorum is present. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Please join me in the salute to the flag. Ready? Begin. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Prior to coming out in public, we had our executive session. During that executive session, we discussed the introduction of the Director of Buildings and Grounds. We had the personnel report. We had a HIB review. We discussed the suspension and detention report and the legal status report. At this time, Dr. Mass, this is the superintendent's report, please. Yes, yeah, so, so tonight I, I would like to just share a little bit that I learned from talking to the Department of Health today regarding the fact that the district is experiencing, unfortunately, an increase of COVID-19 cases because of the changing conditions and recognizing, according to the Department of Health, that New Jersey could turn from yellow to orange. Um, that, that the high COVID activity level is increasing. I just want to emphasize some safety precautions we can all take. So just in watching those conditions, if you have symptoms, the Department of Health really encourages you to test early. And if you need help in testing, the nurses have test kits that they, they will give you. So you will be able to make sure that you are COVID negative. Um, and and additionally, consider um, wearing masks if those conditions do change from, from yellow to orange. We want all of our students and teachers to be in school for the remaining 28 full days of school. <laughs> so that's Thank my you. report, Dr. Cole. Thank you, Dr. Mast. Uh, business Administrator's Report, Mr. Jones. Thank you. Um, so tonight we are going to approve our transportation uh, bid. So we had a bid for transportation, but I wanted to just give an overall sense of where we're at transportation wise in terms of costs. So, you know, at the budget presentation, I, you know, we put in the budget 30% increase in our transportation costs and you know that's part of the planning but now sort of we get closer to next year and we're starting to plan for that stuff we're seeing the cost come in um, at least that high so just a couple of numbers to let everybody understand sort of where we're at um, in 1819 um, we spent 2.8 million dollars on transportation uh, for next year's budget we're looking at 5.5 million dollars so we're double since pre-pandemic. So it's a significant, um, you know, hit the district for real. Um, and, you know, I think the majority of our, our costs, um, you know, are in are related to special education, the students that deserve it. Um, and it's about approximately 83% of our budget. And that cost has more than doubled. So it's, it's over, it's like 200% 200, 200 increase. So that's the majority of the increase, but we're seeing in other areas as well. So our, what we're going to approve tonight is going to be the uh, transportation uh, bid for a majority of students. And that increased from last year, 60%. So, and that is a public bidding process. So it is, we advertise for it. We put it out to uh, multiple transportation agencies. It's anybody can bid on it. Um, we had uh, multiple bus companies contact us regarding information, um, but we only had one bidder. So one bidder is the lowest cost bidder. So we have to accept that bid. Um, and you know, that's, you know, we've had a lot of you know, issues with transportation. I think everybody knows that um, it hasn't been very reliable um, due to the bus driver shortage. And so we will, um, 
you know, it's, it's difficult to explain that we have to spend 60% more and, and yet our service is not 60% better, not even close. Uh, in fact, it's uh, less reliable than it was uh, three years ago. Um, so it's an ongoing issue, you know, um, for transportation, but you know, we're continuing to, um, we've stabilized it from where we were back in, you know, October. You know, so, but it continues to be a challenge. We're continuing, we're, we have a, a full ramp up plan that we're already starting to execute for the fall. And we feel pretty good that we'll, you know, minimize any disruption uh, to the best of our ability. We've hired additional uh, substitute drivers um, and we proactively uh, hired for um, positions that are for potential turnover in the staff. Um, and, you know, but even when we, interview we, we reposted the position for bus drivers we had um we had it open for uh, three four weeks almost a month uh we had one applicant so uh you know that's sort of what we're looking at in terms of transportation um so yeah just want to give a general overview of where we're at we're continuing to work through it and um we don't stop looking for efficiencies so i think especially uh partnering with our school districts we're looking at um to try to uh, mitigate any cost that we can. So we'll continue to do that and uh, you know take things uh, as they come and continue to um, work on improvements. So that's it. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Hey, the New Jersey Open Public Meeting Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the Scotch Plains Fairwood Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof posted at the Board of Education offices located at 512 Cedar Street, Scotch Plains, New Jersey, and such notice was also provided in written notice and forwarded to the Times, now known as the Union County Hawk, the Star Ledger, the Township Clerk of Scotch Plains and the Borough Clerk of Fanwood, and the revised annual notice of regularly scheduled meetings as adopted September 1st, 2021. At this time, we will have instructional updates, recognition of winter track, and the PTA Reflections winner. So if I may, Dr. Kulikowski, I would like to invite Dr. Slocum to the mic first to celebrate uh, uh, a young artist in the audience with us. Dr. Slocum. Thank you so much, Dr. Mast and Board of Education. I'm so honored to be here tonight to uh, recognize one of our students, Ms. Aviana Scarfio. Scarfio, sorry. <laughs> um, we are so proud of her. She is a Reflections winner for the for the action she won a state award. So we would and in choreography, and we hope to have the pleasure of seeing her award too at some point. But she is a first grader at McGinn in Ms. Gonzalez's class, and she is new this year and she has done an amazing job. She made it all the way to the state. So thank you very much. Can you come up here to, uh, with, with your student and parent? To I would be honored to. Thank you so much. Mom, you should come up too. <laughs> Please. First grade. Can she sit here? You can sit right, right in the Everybody front. Yeah, come right up here. All right, go ahead. I'm going to hold this. Hello, my name is Aviana Sharafa. I am a first grader at McGinn. I made up my own jazz dance to a fun Christmas song by Mariah Carey. I love to dance 
and make up my own dances. I thought this dance was a good way to show the love I have for dance. Dancing makes me happy. I hope it makes other people feel happy too. Thank you, Dr. Slocum, and thank you, Ariana. I'm just going to read the resolution at this time. Whereas the PTA Reflections Program is a nationally acclaimed student recognition program established by the National PTA designed to encourage students in grades K through 12 to explore their talents and express themselves artistically by creating works of art. And whereas the 2021-2022 Reflections Program theme was I Will Change the World by, whereby students in kindergarten through the 12th grade submitted their interpretation of the theme in six artistic areas, including dance choreography, film production, literature, music composition, photography, and visual arts. And whereas the Scotch Plains Fanwood Parent Teacher Association under the leadership of PTA Council President Suzanne Borkland continue, continues to enthusiastically participate in the National PTA Reflections Program. And whereas Ariana Ciarafo, first grade student at the William J. McGinn Elementary School, has received an award of merit in the 2021-2022 PTA Reflections Program at the New Jersey State level for her entry entitled Twinkle. And whereas it is truly an honor to have Aviana's work and recognized by the hundreds of statewide submissions, we applaud Aviana's work, efforts to, and determination in participating in this artistic program. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Scotch Plains Family Board of Education extends its sincere congratulations to Aviana Ciarafo for receiving an award of merit for her dance choreography entitled Twinkle and extends best wishes for her continued success. Congratulations. We're very proud of you and thank you for taking the time to come out tonight. So, so, so the second part, Dr. Kulikowski, of the instructional update might be very fast uh, because we have our, our amazing track students here with us tonight, and I would like to <laughs> invite Mr. Miller to, to the microphone to introduce the coaches and the students, please. Thank you, Dr. Mast. Thank you, everyone. Track and field is uh, arguably one of the most unique sports that we offer at the high school. It's an individual sport, so you have to do your best individually, and then you score together as a team. And what you put into it, it's the same advice I gave to my own son as he was going into high school. It's one of the only sports that everything you put into it, you get out of it at the end. So when we talk about the accomplishments of the, the, young, the young man that's here today and the young women that are here today, it's not only what they put into it, but it's also a mixture of talent. And I would be remiss if I didn't bring up the, the special partnership between Coach McGriff and Coach Cagle. They've been together for longer than they want to admit, but the mixture of what they do and the way that they empower our children to get better and the way that they trust one another and then put that trust into the students and parents is truly remarkable. It makes me proud to say that I just step away from that. When I got here, we recognized how great they were and I just let them go. So don't touch something that works, right? Leave it alone and let it keep working. And that's what we're doing with track. Uh, and I'm just so proud of the accomplishments of this program. I don't want to take away anything that Coach McGriff or Coach Kegel might say, so I'm not going to list their accomplishments. But the only last thing I will say is having the opportunity to go indoors this year and, and be at the group meet, be at the sectional meet. I don't know who gets along better, the athletes or the parents. And that's one other thing that's unique to track is wherever you go, you find a bond between the parents. And that's so special too. And I hope that moms and dads that you recognize what a special bond that got created because of what your young athletes were able to do. So it is my honor to introduce Coach McGriff and Coach Cagle to give the accolades for this program. <laughs> Oh, it's hot. 
Um, good evening. Uh, thank you, board, and Dr. Mass, for having us here. Um, I'd like to thank the parents, you know, for allowing us to coach your kids, and Dr. Hyde, um, now, uh, Mr. Miller, you know, for the all the support that they give us. Um, I'm Coach McGriff. Um, I'm officially the boys' head coach, but as, as Mr. Miller said, uh, Mr. Cable and I here, you know, we've been working together you know, for over two decades, and um, you know, we're friends and we're partners and. And so when we, we coach and we work together, we work together with boys and girls and and we work with them not simply as our athletes and stuff. And I I know, especially Mr. Kago, they are his children. That's only work there. So when we when we work with them and and not that we do appreciate you parents of them because they are our kids too. And you allow us to have them for a little while every day. And so um, we really do appreciate that. Um, so the, the young man um, that I'm speaking for right now is a boys track team, is uh, Kenny Agu. Come on over, Kenny. <laughs> when um, you go to Scottish Plains Sandwood and you run track, the first thing anybody ever says to you is about some guy who ran 1977 and the first guy to ever, you know, go under 13 in the hurdles. So when you hurdle for Scotch Plains Fanwood, people expect you to be good. And Kenny don't disappoint them when it comes to that. You know, so I, I've been a hurdler myself, been a hurdler coach, and when you go to these meets and you know that Scotch Plains showed up because Kenny always showed up. Um, I remember when he first came up here as a young man and you know, when we would sing, ah, oh, you're like your little brother, you your little brother, your big brother, your little brother, your little sister, yes, here, and y'all, he, he's just that little guy, but that's never what Kenny was gonna be. In Kenny's mind, you can ask him right now. You can challenge Kenny to any of that right now. He'll tell you, he'll beat you. Just give him some time. He'll figure it out, he'll go beat you. And, and that's what I love about him. I love that you can challenge him with whatever, and he will, he will accept that challenge. He will accept that challenge, and he will go out there and he will give the effort to be that champion in whatever it is. And that's why he's as good as he is right now. He's, he's been a county champ in the hurdles. He's been a sectional champ in the hurdles. He's been a sectional champ in the sprints. He's made it to the meet of champions in the sprints and he made it to meet the champions in the hurdles. And when, when you make it to the meet of champions, that means you are the top 24 in the state in that. You know, and that's out of over a thousand people who competed in doing that. He's going to top 24. So he's been the top 24 in that. And he's qualified for nationals. He's, he's gone to the nationals as, as a shuttle hurdle team. And he's taking it right there. And he's already, he's, he's our leader of our shuttle hurdle team who's qualified, national qualifying times for those shuttle hurdles right now. He's a phenomenal athlete. He's a phenomenal competitor. And uh, he's one of those guys, I, I, I like the needle, I like him push him, but I know he's going to respond. And you know, we have a once in a generation, I know people with the girls you're here, stuff like that. But when I think back at this time and there'll be that time when we look back and think that wait, who who's the boys in that team over there? I thought, Oh no. Yeah, you remember it. Kenny was there. Hmm. So proud to have him. Kenny Agu. <laughs> speak for the girls. Thank you. Thank you everyone for having us here tonight for all the support that we get over the years. Uh, it's been 26 years now. That's that's the exact number. So it's it's been a while and I, I go back and forth between it's gone by so quickly. I said, oh, that's, a, that's a long time. I spent more than half of my life doing this. But it uh, it's a lot easier the long days when, when things are going well and it makes that time that we spent all the more worthwhile uh, a lot of sports, their, their contests are over in an hour and a half, and a lot of times, especially in the winter, we're here on a Sunday morning at 6 a.m. for a bus, and we'll be lucky if we get home dinner time. So those, those 10 and 12 hour days are kind of commonplace, and Sundays also, late nights at the Armory, getting back here at 10 or 10.30, and then you know, trying to get home and get wound down so we can get back up for, for school tomorrow and helping kids with their math on the bus or between or after events. Uh, it's a big part of our lives, but uh, 
but we love it and uh, the kids make it all worthwhile. And it's, it's a bonus when we do well, which is what this season was like. So I'd like the young ladies to come up, please. Uh, we were up here last June, I think, and we, we had just a phenomenal season last June. And it was hard to think of too many things that we could do to, to build on that. Just kind of. Ladies, come up here. Stay right here. Nobody's looking at you. I am. I'm looking. So last spring, we, like I said, we had, we had a great deal of success. And it was, it was one of our best seasons ever. And we were thinking about what are the things that we could do to top that. And we, we did a lot of those things this winter. Uh, right off the bat, uh, coming out and running fast times. Uh, the county relay championship coming off of uh, sports being shut down for, I think we didn't practice for 10 days and we came right back and we had a meet the first day back and we hadn't seen the kids in, in quite some time. So just do what we can. And we went out and we won the four by 200 and the four by 400 right away. So I'm like, all right, all right, we're in good shape. We did that well without practicing for a while. And then it, it just turned into breaking records left and right, winning championships left and right, uh, doing things that had never been done before, even with the big things that we'd already done in the past. Uh, Team-wise culminating in winning the, the group three state championship by just a resounding margin. We went out and we said, all right, 400, that's the first event, one of our best events. We're allowed three people in each event. We qualified three through, we had gone one, two, three in the section. We came right out right away, first event, went one, two, three in the group in the 400. So we just scored 24 points. And we were thinking like, I wonder if that was enough to win the meet. It wasn't quite enough. I think second place had, had about 28, but we just, Literally, we ran away with the meet and we just first place after first place. So there's all these different places and ways that we can measure our success, individual events, school records, uh, winning relay races, winning team championships. And we did all those things this winter. And uh, we rewrote the record books and, and put them in places that, uh, that it's gonna take a long time for people to get to. And it, it might, if it happens, it may be after the two of us retire. Uh, but everything's just been, it's been wonderful. And the, the ball keeps rolling this, this spring. We more records left and right. Uh, individual championship seasons coming up. We've been winning a lot of relays. And uh, it's just been, it's been fantastic. And, and one of the things that makes it easy is that we have such a nice group of kids on the team. A lot of times when you have kids that are this good all together people develop an attitude and there's uh there's a lot of tension and we haven't had any of that and it just makes it so much easier to coach because people don't stop really coaching because they uh they stop loving the sport it's because things just get too difficult for them and that the the other things outside of it uh that never happened here and uh i'm proud of the girls uh I'm thankful that I have Coach McGriff here. Coach Darty couldn't make it tonight, but we, the three of us have been partners for a long time. I'm going to introduce the girls real quickly, just from left to right. It's Danielle Most. Uh, Danielle uh, ran legs on our, our 4x400 team that won the, the meet of champs uh, this winter. And uh, also, we all Americans in uh, the 4x400 and also in, in the 400. So we took things all the way through to, to nationals. And we have, we have objective ways to evaluate people. We use stopwatches and we, we line up on the so we weren't voted all Americans. We went out and we did it. Right. Janai Berry, Janai's 400, 800 runner, also on that that four by 400 team, and she was the Eastern States champion in the in the 800. Uh, Julie Jackson, uh, Julie was a state champ in the in the 400 again, and anchored our four by 400. Uh, lots of school records in there. Uh, Grace Kennedy, Grace is one of, probably the most versatile girl we have on a team. She, she can do anything pretty much and do it well, even with, uh, with minimal time spent on the event and we'll teach her something and she's good at it right away. Uh, Grace ran anything from 55 meters up through 800 for us and uh, lots of championships in there individually and relay. Uh, Ava Bellotto was a state qualifier in the shot put for us. She was our best shot putter this winter. And one thing that, that makes it more difficult is that we're a little bit short staffed in the winter and uh, Ava had to do a lot of self coaching. Uh, some of these meets we go to the shot puts in a different building than everything else. But she really did, did a good job uh, improving herself and also shepherding the younger kids on the team. Uh, Zoe Hopkins, Zoe was a, a first timer with us this winter. Uh, she was a hurdler, uh, also doing some jumping now and, and sprinting. And Zoe's going to be a, a huge part of the team. She was a group three qualifier in the, in the high hurdles already just in her first season. 
and Kira Kelly. Kira did anything from 55 through 400 with us. She ran on that, uh, the four by two and four by four teams at times, Union County Championship in that first meet back. And uh, she's one of the younger girls on the team is gonna be a, a bigger part of things from, uh, from now uh, through graduation. Uh, it goes without saying, uh, this has been surreal for us. Uh, it's been fantastic, and uh, we're looking forward to all the things we could do in, in the spring. Uh, thank you all for having us and uh, for all your support. We appreciate it. Uh, I've been a career here. Uh, I started 22 years old. Ms. Riffin, this was my partner in new teacher orientation back in 1996. Uh, Dr. Mass used to be my supervisor. Uh, so it's just been a big part of our lives, and we're, we're so thankful that, that uh, you can be a part of it with us, so thank you. Coaches, if you could join the girls for a picture. <laughs> Sorry, I was on video. <laughs> two resolutions to read. Whereas the 2021-22 Varsity Winter Track teams had a remarkable season that concluded with the girls team earning the first group three Winter Track Championship in school history at the Bennett Center Bubble in Toms River on February 26, 2022. And whereas the group three Winter Track Championship team consisted of Grace Kelly, Janae Berry, Julia Jackson, Ava Bellato, Daniel Most, and Zoe Hopkins, and whereas the following athletes distinguished themselves with the following achievements. Kenny Agwu, sectional champion at the North Two Group Three sectionals in the 55 meter hurdles. Grace Kennedy, Kira Kelly, Janae Berry, Julia Jackson, the Union County Relay champions in the four by 200 and the four by 400. Gabriella Crona, Julia Jackson, Grace Kennedy, Janae Berry, New Balance Games champions, four by 800 and a school record. Grace Kennedy, Danielle Most, Janae Berry, Julia Jackson, the Group 3 Relay, Union County North 2 Group 3 Meet of Champions winner, third place at the New Balance Nationals and a school record holder in the 4x400. Four Grace Kennedy, North 2 Group 3 sectional champion in the 800, runner-up in the 400 at the North 2 Group 3 sectional group three meet and the third place at the meet of champions. Janae Berry, Eastern State Champion and school record holder in the 800, runner up in the 800 at the North Two Group Three sectionals, and third at the North Two Group Three sectionals. Julia Jackson, County Sectional Group Eastern States and Meet of Champions winner in the 400, sectional and Group Three champion in the 55, school records in the 55, 200, 400, and second place in the New Balance Nationals. Whereas the, vars the Varsity Winter Track Program and these individuals exhibited outstanding talent, dedication, and teamwork throughout the season, they were led by head coaches Jeff K Kegel and Rich McGriff, assisted by Dan Doherty. This team was received and well-deserved recognition for the following students, staff, and the Scotch Plains family communities for their outstanding efforts and accomplishments. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Scotch Plains Fanwood Board of Education recognizes and congratulates the 2021-2022 Varsity Winter Track Program. These individuals and their coaches for their outstanding achievements and wishes them continued success in all future endeavors. Congratulations, everyone.
and the second resolution. Whereas the 2021-2022 Girls Varsity Winter Track Team had a remarkable season, and that concluded with the girls team earning first Group 3 Winter Track Championship in the school history at the, Benet, at the Bennett Center Bubble in Toms River on February 26, 2022. And whereas in order to earn All-American status for winter track, an athlete must finish the top eight at the National Indoor Track event. And whereas the following athletes earned All-American designation at the New Balance Nationals held at the New York City Armory on March 11 through 13, 2022. The 4x400 four team of Janae Berry, Julia Jackson, Grace Kennedy, and Danielle Most, third place Julia Jackson in the 400, finishing second. Whereas the girls varsity winter track program and these individuals exhibited outstanding talent, dedication, and teamwork throughout the season and were led by head coach, coaches Jeff Cagle, Rich McGriff, and assisted by Dan Doherty, this team received the well-deserved recognition from fellow students, staff, and the Scotch Plains family communities for their outstanding efforts and accomplishments. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Scotch Plains Family Board of Education recognizes and congratulates the 2021-2022 Girls Varsity Winter Track Program and these individuals and their coaches for their outstanding achievements and wishes them continued success in all their future endeavors. Again, congratulations. I appreciate you all for taking the time to come out and share your success with us. And we're very proud of you all, and it's an honor to read these resolutions for you all. So thank you for doing so wonderfully for our communities. Go oh, Raiders. Yeah. <laughs> Do we want to pass the resolutions first or well? Oh, okay. That's a good idea, Mrs. Bell. <laughs> Could I have a motion to accept the, the resolutions as I read this evening? So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Bauer. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Winkler. Any question or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. <laughs> Well, I, I, Mrs. I just wanted to say it was an exciting evening. We started, we had, um, you know, the youngest, and then we had high school. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think we've ever had uh, such a young presenter read and share before um, so and all by yourself so thank you very much Aviana um, I can just picture you dancing I can imagine Twinkle I'm sure it's wonderful um, and and it was all about movement tonight so uh, we, <laughs> we really um, are very proud of our our track athletes um, I can't imagine being that fast no. and, <laughs> and uh, you're very impressive and uh, your coaches are as well and their dedication. So um, we thank them and certainly the parents for their support. But thank you, as uh, Dr. Kulikowski said, for sharing your success with us. There's no other comments. I'd like to take a five minute recess, please. We're in recess. Everyone, you're like to, you can stay for the rest of the meeting, or you can exit. That's up to you. Yes, dance. Did you do uh, athletics in the high school? This is the winter track team, and then this is just the girls. <laughs> I did softball in middle school, and I definitely went up to the three. This includes Mr. Abbott. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> this one does not. <laughs> Thank you. We don't want to hear that retirement word again, Mr. Cagle. I still have to go. He's too young. How could you quit now? He's too young. That's right, Jeff. We're too young. <laughs> All right, thank you. He's ready to break the recess. Okay. Yes. Okay, our five minute recess is done. Thank you for letting me have that. Um, at our next meeting on May 19th, we'll be having another instructional update, which will include PTA Council and PTA Council Presidents. This brings us to the first of two public comments. In accordance with the Scotch Plains Fanwood Public School Bylaw 0164-0165, the meeting will be open for 15 minutes for public comments, maximum three minutes per speaker. Speakers addressing superintendent items, business functions, and other board business will be heard first. If time remains, speakers may address other matters. Speakers, if you'd like to come up to the podium, please speak slowly and clearly state your full name and the town in which you reside. Please note board members cannot respond regarding concerns of individual students or staff members and such matters should be addressed with the superintendent's office. So if you'd like to make a public comment, please come to the podium at this time. I just want to give a shout out to. Uh, well, we I know need your a, name for Oh, Gary Morris, uh, Fanwood, New Jersey. Thank you. Obviously, New Jersey. Uh, <laughs> boy, am I an idiot. <laughs> um, I just wanted to give a shout out to uh, Mr. Cagle. I know he's not here, but you can't pay this man enough. Um, my daughter just accepted a very uh, prestigious uh, teaching job. Uh, as a math teacher uh, just this past week in, uh, in California and that man was the inspiration for her decision and I, like I said, unbelievable. And you can't even imagine my daughter, it, it, like he changes the language speaking about math and it was just uh, just one of the most impa impactful teachers. So it was cool seeing him uh, tonight. I never actually got to talk to him before, but I got a chance to actually shake his hand and just thank him. And I think that that, that speaks volumes to uh, to the quality of, of, of that man and uh, and what he's done for my child. So that's it. Well, thank, thank you for sharing that inspirational moment with about Coach Cagle for your daughter. That's very nice. And your daughter's success. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. <laughs> Is there anybody else that wishes to make a public comment at this time? Seeing no one, we'll close this portion of the meeting and move on to committee reports. Does anybody have a committee report? Mrs. Winkler. Yeah, I have the committee report for curriculum. Okay. Uh, curriculum committee met on Tuesday, May 3rd. Um, we talked about the um, Quest curriculum updates for grades 6 and 8, um, updates to the 6th and 8th grade units in Quest, district um, 
changes made reflect an extension of classroom general education lessons, incorporate multiple discipline integration and are project based. Students were pulled to incorporate their voice in choosing the units of study. There's a new sixth grade unit on law selected by students as an area of interest. Uh, they learn the importance of the legal system, impact on daily life, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights as a foundation of our legal system. Uh, Mr. Roskin reported that student interest has been high and the unit has been very successful. Students have engaged around debating subjects such as school segregation and desegregation. Uh, since the previous 8th grade Quest units were moved to 7th grade, uh, Genius Hour and Google It, now 8th grade includes a new architecture unit. Students are exposed to how design elements reflect culture, certain time periods, and the importance in historical context. Uh, students will also understand different types of architecture and the beauty and function of buildings. They're working on a civic architecture project, picking their own place to design a building or space that represents their communities. Um, we also talked about the Title I literacy coach activities um, and impact in the 21-22 school year. Uh, Ms. Gribben spoke about success of her literacy coaching in the district, which comprises supporting teachers and students in the Teachers College Writers Workshop Program. She provides professional development after school that models to teachers providing various types of instruction, mini lessons, conferencing for individual students. She's been able to model planning and teaching lessons that teachers could observe. Now she is running fourth grade book clubs, after school meetings that include mini lessons, reading and discussion in groups. Teachers feel more supported and can differentiate their lessons better. Um, and it's led to student growth. We also talked about summer learning acceleration programs uh, being funded by the American Rescue Plan funds that we received. Um, we have an algebra readiness accelerator course uh, that um, Ms. Kelly spoke to us about, just a uh, four week intervention and support class that will run probably in July and August. Um, focusing on prerequisite skills that would prepare students in grades 8 through 10 who might need to repeat algebra or additional support to stay on track. Uh, this is still being developed in terms of structure and materials. Also, uh, mystery foundational skills in disguise unit uh, for reading and writing in grades 2 to 5. Um, and Ms. Mullman spoke with us about uh, this supplemental unit for reading and writing skills using mysteries for students in grades two to four. Um, planning about maybe four meetings for this uh, in the July and August time frame. Also uh, English language immersion experience and we have Ms. Howard come in and discuss the summer program for English language learners in grades K to eight. It'll be a week long immersion experience for our English language learners focusing on standard of acquiring language for social and instructional purposes within the school setting. Uh, it would be in August where students will practice language and prepare for a new school year, meet other students from other buildings. Students will have an older mentor who was uh, graduating from the English language learner program and will become more comfortable within the district as well as with language. We also uh, talked about the AP statistics and um, reviewed a textbook for adoption. Our current textbook is from 2011. The new text is proposed um, as the 1920 AP course was updated by the College Board. And the new book is more aligned with the learning objectives of the AP course. Other districts in Union and Morris counties are currently using this text. The book has various options of online and hard copy formats, so the department is deciding now exactly what's needed, and then it'll come back to us for a vote. Um, we also reviewed the curricula matrix for the coming school year. And our next meeting will be June 1st. Thank that you, Mrs. Winkler. Anybody have any questions? No questions. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Williams, you have a report? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. So I'll be reading um, Silly's report in the absence of the chairperson, Evan Murray. We met on May 2nd. We discussed um, summer projects. 11 been finalized and are expected to be completed this summer. Those funds will be coming from a general fund. And three of those projects require approval at the next board meeting. 
with funds coming from the maintenance reserve. Um, there's been a request for approval to hire a new demographer from Statistical Forecasting LLC, <coughs> and they will be providing school demographic services such as enrollment projections, computer mapping, redistricting, and geocoding for school districts in um, New York and New Jersey. Um, also requesting approval of a feasibility study by Potter Architects of the deterioration of the high school track. And those funds will be coming from Capital Reserve as well. Um, discussed um, the Nettingham Media Center floor repair. Um, that was, um, we need repair because of Hurricane Ida. And that's going to be paid from our insurance. Um, pavers at Terrell Middle School will also start sometime next week. Um, there's no actions at this time for eight of the 11 projects. Um, the re recommended approval for the Terrell Middle School gym, stage, former industrial arts room, and approval for the refurbishments in the art room at the high school, and approvals, approving for the auto flushers across the district as requested. Um, and that concludes my report. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Any questions? Seeing none, thank you. Any other reports? I have a report for uh, the Finance Committee for uh, Deb Brody. Um, the uh, some of the th the one one of the things that we talked about, um, uh, Ms. Williams just mentioned, which was the demographers report um, and uh, what what parts and various things we would like information from the demographer. Um, and um, we also uh, spent a good deal of time on transportation, which our VA was talking about earlier, um, and the increased costs. And I would just like to say that I, I really want to thank our business office, our our business administrator and assistant for their hard work in <laughs> uh, trying to massage the numbers and, um, as he said, come up with efficiencies. Um, we talked about health insurance and um, uh, were able to get some adjustments by negotiating and um, really um, I hate to use the word threaten, but <laughs> uh, say we might go elsewhere. So they really have been negotiating well, let me say, to try and, and save some money. Um, uh, not that it's going to balance out totally the transportation. Um, and, and therefore, there is going to be a, a small increase to the subscription busing from 625 to 650. We also talked about the food service contract. Um, and as the public knows, we have a 2% cap, but even that is going up over the 2%, it's going up 4%. Um, and we did talk about uh, more food options though for the coming year, and, and also um, there was some discussion around a school store. So um, there's a lot of conversation and monitoring of the finances and the budget um, with the goal to keep the district in the same good financial standing it has been in the past. So thank you again. Thank you, Mrs. Bauer. Any questions for Mrs. Bauer? Thank you. Are there any other reports? Seeing none, we'll move on to letters to the board. One email was received from the public and the appropriate administrator responded. Board motion, superintendent report. Thank you, Dr. Kulikowski. One is move that the board approves the extended school year placements as listed. I have a motion. So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Winkler. Is there a second? Second. second. Thank you, Mrs. Mitchell. Any question or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. 2S, I move that the Board of Education approves the superintendent's decisions in the HIP cases listed from the session on April 28th. There were 15 cases. Two were determined to be HIP. Are we doing these this way or this one? Yes. Okay. Can I have a motion? No move. Thank you, Mrs. Winkler. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Any question or discussion? 
Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The, the remaining three are for our next meeting. Move that the Board of Education approves the school nursing plan. Um, 4S, move that the Board of Education approves the matrix of forms. And 5S is move that the, the Board of Education approves the curricular matrix for 22-23. Okay, we'll look forward to hearing those next week. Or next, yeah, it's next week, the 19th. Yes. All right. Uh, personnel report. And I move that the Board of Education approves the superintendent's recommendations for personnel as discussed in exact this evening. Can I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Winkler. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Any question or discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Jones, will you please call the roll? So, Ms. Winkler? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Ms. Bauer? Yes. Mrs. Mitchell? Yes. Dr. Kolkowski? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Thank you, Dr. Mass. And then back to you, Mr. Jones, for the business report. I'll read through these and then we'll come through and add, uh, we're going to vote on uh, one through four. Okay. So uh, the first one's the staff training. The second one is the uh, ESY related services related to what we did in the superintendent's report. Number three is the transportation bid that I discussed previously. Uh, number four is the uh, the topic the study for the high school track erosion that um, Ms. Williams referenced in her committee report. Um, number five is uh, the description busing increase that Ms. Bauer referenced in her report. Um, number six is uh, the indoor air quality that we do yearly. Uh, number five is the uh, medical increase and that, that Ms. Bauer referenced in her report. Number eight is a consultant that we use for working with our with Power School, which is the uh, attendance um, attendance slash student of record system that we have within the district and that we do this every year. Um, number nine is this a service for trial assessment, which we use for our policies. Number 10 is our uh, agreement with Union County Ed Services for our special education transportation. Um, number 11 is just our bank that we use. Number 12 is the um, renewal for our food service, which Ms. Maurer referenced in her report. 13 is the um, demographic study that we that Ms. Williams and Ms. Bauer referenced in their reports. Uh, 14 is uh, our renewal of Amaker and, and Porterfield Transportation. We're still waiting for some information from them, but I believe they're going to just, um, they're not going to go to bid, so they're going to renew. So that would be great. That would be a 2% increase is what we're looking at now. Um, 15 is just resolution to join the athletics, New Jersey Athletics. 16, our fire drill. 17, our board secretary's report. 18, our account reconciliations. And 19 is our bills. So we're gonna, again, we're going to vote on one through four. Okay, can I have a motion? We're voting on numbers what? One through four. One through four. Okay. Can I have a motion? So move. Thank you, Mrs. Winkler. To the second. Second. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Any further question or discussion? Seeing, yes, Mrs. Winkler. I just want to, again, thank Christopher and James for all the work that they do in the business office trying to keep our, our costs under control when they're so wildly not. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's beyond our, you know, it's not, it's, it's, it's got to be fun to step into a position at a time when everything is so chaotic uh, across the state, and I, I really appreciate all the work that you put into this. So thank you. Thank you for your comments, Mrs. Winkler. Okay, that being said, um, we had a motion, we had a second, we had comments. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries, Mr. Jones. Thank you. Uh, board policies, Mrs. Winkler? Yes, at this time, um, I have nothing to add to what we 
discussed at our last meeting, but at our next meeting, I will be asking for approval of second reading and adoption for the policies listed on the agenda. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Franklin. Is there any new board business? Seeing none, other board business. Any liaison reports? <coughs> No liaison reports. Other board business to OBB request to attend workshops and workshop reports. Seeing none, three OBB. At our next meeting, we will have the resolution for School Nurses Day. And approval of the minutes from April 28th will be at our next meeting. That brings us to our second and final public comment portion. In accordance with the Scotch Plains Fanwood Public School Bylaws 0164, 0165, the meeting will be open for 15 minutes for public comments. Maximum of three minutes per speaker. Speakers addressing superintendent items, business functions, and other board business would be heard first. If time remains, speakers may address other matters. Speakers, if you'd like, please come up to the podium, speak slowly and clearly, state your full name and the town in which you reside. Please note board members cannot respond regarding concerns of individual students or staff members. Such matters should be addressed by the superintendent's office. So if you'd like to make a public comment, this is the time to please come to the podium. I like your shirt. Hi, Joy Hopkins, Fanwood. I just have a question. I wanted to know the purpose of two students, if they have a fight in school, that both students are suspended if one is defending themselves. What is the process, or not the process, what is the purpose of suspending both students when one student is defending themselves? Uh, Ms. Hopkins, I just want to point out for the public comment period, uh, sorry, over here, Dr. Sylvester speaking, um, if you have anything else you'd like to say, uh, please say that, and any questions you have, if the administration or the board wants to respond, they'll respond once you're done, but because, I, I'm, you're paused right now, but because we set the time for three minutes, again, if that's all you have to say, yeah, that's, that's perfectly fine. Question. Okay, I just want to be clear. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Kolodowski, I can respond to the, the question, at least in part. Um, certainly, I can't speak to any specific incident, um, but part of the issue uh, to Ms. Coppin's concern about um, fights and student altercations, obviously, the administration on the school level handles those uh, uh, those incidents to begin with. Um, oftentimes, um, you know, it's not so clear whether or not students are defending themselves, but just as a general legal issue, that there are different uh, punishments in the student code of conduct for fights, which are usually mutual engagements, versus assaults, which are uh, one-sided engagements. Um, but as a general rule, things are handled on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, there are very th few things in the code of conduct and in the law in New Jersey that are kind of a zero tolerance. It is a uh, up to the discretion of the, lo uh, the building administration based on the facts uh, as they understand them in terms of issuing student discipline. Thank you, Mr. Silvestro. Is there anybody else that wants to make a public comment at this time? Hi, Gina Berry, Fanwood. Um, just wanted to kind of advocate for my lovely track team. Um, so I've mentioned this before, we need uniforms. Um, you know, it's been, uh, I, my oldest is, I don't even know how old he is at this point, and they have the same uniform since my son graduated in 2015, I think. Okay, so I think it's about time that we kind of really support the track team. We're giving them accolades, but we're not really supporting them in the way that they really need the support. So if we can gather a few thousand to get some uniform for all of the team, not just 25, like this season, I think we had over 150 
50, you know, um, athletes on a track and we don't have enough uniforms for all of them. And I think that's really unfair considering how well they've been doing this past couple of years. They really need new uniforms. And the second thing um, with the program is the equipment. They don't have efficient equipment in the weight room or locker room, I don't know, whatever room the equipments are in. <laughs> um, the equipments are falling apart. I know this because my daughter has um, an issue with her legs, so I'm taking her to um, physical therapists throughout past years. Um, so she is not supposed to run on a hard concrete you know, floor or the hallways or anything like that. So when the weather is bad, she has really no equipment to use when they have to come back in, in the building to work out. From my understanding, the, um, the bicycles are falling apart, the wheels from the bikes are falling apart. They're like trying to change pieces just to get one bicycle to work so she can get on. So if we can get some equipment for these kids, to use, I mean, it'll be very helpful for the students. Um, the other thing is the coaches. I know we don't want to touch the coaches, as Mr. Miller um, pointed out. However, we do need more coaches for these students, especially in the case of the field events. Um, we don't have any coaches, so poor Ava is coaching herself. So <laughs> we can use some points and field events, but we don't have any coaches to coach the athletes, um, especially during the winter season. So if we can kind of invest in the track team, it will really go a long way for all these students that are really participating and want to be better, um, but we just don't have the real support behind us to do that. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Barry. Is there anybody else that wishes to make a public comment? Gary Morris Fanwood, that was much better. <laughs> um, just real quick, uh, I, I know there's a lot of stuff happening with board meetings re regarding reading material. So I thought I'd, I'd just convey a, a personal story that happened with my family. I have four children, all of them made it through, all of them are successful and, and, and doing well, thank God. Um, but. Um, my one son, when he was a, when he was a sophomore, around 2010, he he had he was reading a book and he really had trouble with it, and and it just was something in his spirit told him this this is just not right, and so we started reading the book along with him. It was um, oh what the heck is the name of it? In the Lake of the Woods, um, and it, quite frankly, there's a, there's a part in the book where the the main character, um, who was a veteran and apparently was involved in atrocities in, in Vietnam, um, conveys a, a very dangerous message to children on how to manipulate yourself into doing a horrific act. And that act, um, turns out he, well, what he would do to psych himself up is he would say, kill Jesus over and over. And as a Christian, I found that rather offensive that this would be in a book that was just distributed willy-nilly to everybody in, in school. Um, I'm not one for book banning. I just want adequate choices and everything. But he goes on, this man goes on later in, in uh, after he sells, says, kill Jesus, he pours boiling hot water on plants, killing the plants, and then does the same to his wife. And in graphic detail, saying, uh, you know, the skin coming off, turning colors. This isn't a book that a child, a 10th grader, is reading. Now, at the time, uh, you know, we brought it to the attention of the school. We didn't go as far as coming to the board, and that's why I'm coming now. As, as I'm looking back, I, you know, I'm saying to myself, did I not do enough back then to say, say something? And, and um, one of the things was, I, so I started, we, my wife and I really worked hard at doing this, and it was a lot of work. We would dive into every book list and look at them, and we would peruse which ones, when there was a choice, we were like, yeah, 
yeah, go with this one, this one, this one will do the least harm, if you will, which is, it's kind of sad to have to do that in, in a lot of ways, you know, whether it be, you know, um, sexually explicit, quite frankly, in some of these things, if a stranger on the street gave my child a sexually explicit book, I would be upset about it, right? I would probably get the guy arrested. But somehow in, in a school system, you're allowed to give a kid a sexually explicit book under the guise of award-winning literature. And again, just simple thing, don't want books banned, but is there some way we could do, just like the movies have um, ratings and things like that, is there some way to have a simple thing to allow parents the tools to make those decisions. And the thing that really struck me was when I, when I spoke to uh, a friend of mine who's a, a single mom, she looked at me after I told her what was in the books and her eyes were welling up and saying, I'm such a bad mom because I didn't have the time to read the books like you and your wife did. So as it turns out, people started coming to me, hey, can you can you help out and help me with these books? So I had I did it for a couple of neighbors. I analyzed the books for them and told them again which ones would be the least harm. It would be so simple. There's there's obviously a lot of tools out there people can use, but let's make it easy on the parents to make make really educated decisions on what's good for their kids. Some kids have mental health issues and it's and it's super important that a parent who knows their child best can help navigate maybe maybe a book about incest and rape and a man who has 600 affairs during the during you know his lifetime maybe that's not the healthiest thing for my child to be reading and and, and mr morris you've exceeded your time but if yeah. you could just finish your thoughts yes yeah, yeah and so and, and that's that's the gist of it uh simple as that um just if there's some way to provide better tools i really think it, it you know even if it's a, a a link to a website that reviews the books to make it easier for parents so they don't have to sit there and research these things time and time again and the sooner you get the list out the sooner parents can help navigate these these issues with their kids that's it thank you for your comments mr morris is there anybody else that would like to make a public comment this evening Seeing no one will close this portion of the meeting. Dr. Just, just in response to some of these comments re regarding the, the conflict between the students, as Doug said, um, you know, it's case by case. So if, if you give my office a call, you know, we could talk about your, your specific experience. Um, Mrs. Barry, regarding advocating for the, the track team, thank you very much. I know that um, Mr. Jones has been working closely with Mr. Miller looking at the replacement cycle of uniforms and the quantity of that, that's needed for the team, as, as well as how the weight room is equipped. Um, I, I know it has, as you pointed out, um, just it, it doesn't have the type of equipment that you've talked about. It, it's all um, like weight equipment. So um, you know, thank thank you for bringing that up. And regarding the you know the, the books and the English department, um, you know, I, I appreciate your comments and your suggestions. We certainly do want to. Um, you know, partner with the parents, and I, I do know that the language arts department, uh, along with, with the supervisor, they do go through a specific process of selecting the books. They're, they have um, very, very specific reasons why, why they choose certain books. Um, they're, they're, they're not selected um, willy-nilly, but when, when you pull out some themes, the, the concerns you raise are, are understandable. So I, I wish you did you know, re reach out in, in in real time because we we could really have un unpacked that specifically. But when parents do have concerns about the literature, um, they often do um, you know go through the chain of command of talking to the teacher, finding out the the instructional purpose than um, you know, going up the chain. And sometimes I get to have those conversations too, and it's just valuable. But 
very important to partner with the parents. And I, I like your recommendation of having a place where parents can, you know, review uh, the, the the content and of the book. Also, also the, the purpose, right? Because so, some of the topics that that are explored, um, it, it is productive for kids to explore some of the things that happen in the world in a, in a very controlled and safe environment. So, um, you know, thank you everyone for your comments tonight. Thank you, Dr. Mast. If I could just add that on our district website, there are um, several upcoming parent events in, in the Office of Curriculum um, with our supervisors, our English language arts supervisor, our math supervisor, and our social studies supervisor, and the dates for those are on our district website. Thank you, Dr. McGarry. Okay, hey, upcoming events, Friday, May 13th, Coffee and Conversation with the Superintendent and members of the Board of Education, 10 a.m. at Nettingham Media Center. Registration is required. The tinyurl.com slash BOE coffee, and the information is also on the district website. Our next regular meeting will be on Thursday, May 19th. It's a regular public meeting here in the administration building at 8 p.m. At this time, are there any remarks for the good of the order? Well, Dr. Mast and I went to the district art show last Wednesday, and we enjoyed it thoroughly. There's some beautiful artworks. That's why there's nothing in here today, <laughs> because they were all over there. And now um, Ms. Prestridge will be returning them to the artist so they can have their creations back. So we enjoyed it there, not here this week. Any other comments, thoughts? Seeing none, can I entertain a motion to adjourn? Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Is there a second? Second. Mrs. Winkler. Any question or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. Motion carries. Good night, everyone. Thank you.